All right, so today we're working on a, an A1707 MacBook that appears to not be turning on. If you take a look on the desk, you'll see that it's taking 170 milliamps at five volts. It's stuck at five volts. And the chip that's going to allow the charger to speak to the MacBook and back and forth and... Turn off the ultrasonic. So as can be seen here, it's taking 200 milliamps and it's at 5 volts. This typically means that the chip that's responsible for speaking to the USB-C charger and saying, hi, I want 20 volts, not 5 volts, is either dead or not getting power. And on this board, that is our CD3215. So this over here is our charge port. See? Charge port. Charge port. And this charge port is going to speak to the CD3215, and you got some stuff going here on pin 6, see that, look at that, see, it talks to the CD3215, and this chip over here is called the USB-C MUX chip, and it's going to be powered on VN, voltage in, that goes over here to PP3V3 underscore G3Hot, let's see if PP3V3 underscore G3Hot is present. Get Kevin. <laughs> I fucking blocked it with my hand! <laughs> Let's try! So, the first thing we're gonna have to do here is see if PP3V3 underscore G3Hot is present. Let's see if PP3V3 underscore G3Hot is present, and if that's gonna allow this chip to power on. So we're gonna turn on Paul Daniels' software, we're gonna put it on the screen, and we're gonna measure and see if PP3V3 underscore G3Hot is present. Now, according to our schematic and board view, PP3V3 underscore G3Hot, can be found on this capacitor right next to the chip. So let's see if that's there. 1.1 volts. <coughs> Paul, 1.1 volts on PP3V3 G3Hot. Have you ever seen that? One volt. And let's see if there's a short. 10 kilo ohms, no short. All right, time to go over to the place that PP3V3 underscore G3Hot is created and see if there's anything wrong with the creation circuit that's keeping this from working. Now, the reason I'm skipping past here is because all these things I'm looking at is PP3V3 underscore G3Hot going into something. I need PP3V3 G3Hot coming out of something. And here we have it on U6903. So, the enable is going to be present on pin 10. Let's make sure enable is present. We're going to turn back to voltage mode. Oh. Interesting. All right, so the enable is 5 volts, so it is, the chip is being told to turn on, but it's only putting out 1 volt. Hmm, that's odd. Now we've got 5 volts coming in. 
The diode's gonna decrease it a little bit, which is expected and understandable. Now in rare cases, the diode is actually decreasing current to the point where this can't work. But I'm not sure if that's what's quite happening here. So let's take, I think that it's only going to give us the full 3.3 or so once it's had a second to start up and go to 20. Now here's something interesting. So right by one of those CD3215s, what I see is corrosion. Nasty, filthy, awful corrosion. So let's see what happens if I use a little bit of flux, small amount, not too much, just a reasonable amount, you know, the same amount that we, Paul would suggest that we usually use. Maniac! <laughs> Lunatic! Paul, that's the amount of flux that you should be using. You work for a company that sells flux. We have a lot of moving expenses coming up. $25,000 security deposit. Probably thirty to 50000 in construction costs. Moving costs. Furniture. We need to sell a lot of flux, Paul! Huh. Do you know how many tubes of this we need to sell? Exactly! Exactly! Shit, did I leave the mic on for that? You gotta show what you gotta show to make money, am I right? NordVPN, folks. Go to nordvpn.com slash bullshit influencer and enter code bullshit influencer. The stream was brought to you by Authentic Amtech Flux. Genuine Amtech Flux. Apple authorized and certified Amtech Flux. Not actually Apple authorized and certified. Alright, so we're using 800 milliamps now at 5 volts, which is a departure from what we had before. Now, another thing I want to check here is that cap that looked nasty was on a different PP3V3 underscore G3 hot LDO that seems to come out of the CD3215 itself. Point three. I wonder what happens if we change our CD3215. Let's change this chip with another one. Well then, there's a lot of shorts under that ship.
What's your Halloween costume? I don't honestly didn't have time to think about or celebrate Halloween. Thank you, JP. But I have no Halloween costume. Nobody here did this year, actually. 2013, I remember everybody here dressing up for Halloween, posting a picture. Alright, let's get ourselves another CD3215 from store.rossmangroup.com. Stop it. No more running away. Am I cleaning the pee-pee, says Vermilion? Perhaps. <coughs> okay, we're back to 1.4 volts on PP3 by 3. 5 volts there. Is the 5 volts actually coming into the chip? 4.7. Now, sometimes what happens is this diode is actually limiting the current a little too much so it doesn't produce what it's supposed to. Which could be happening here. You never know. So I am going to replace both, I'm going to replace that diode right now, just in case that's what's going on here. Committee, I got my 80 page new lease today, and we are going to go through it at the speed you would imagine for an 80 page lease. Oh look, now we get 20 volts. Check it out. See, 20 volts. So let's go over what was going on here. So it was that cap that was mildly corroded that I was ignoring because I'm a dumbass. Second stream in a row, last day where I've done something stupid, but I might as well show you so that you learn from it. It doesn't do you any good if I hide the videos where I'm an idiot. So let's go over this. Now, this cap over here was corroded, and I stupidly replaced this chip, which probably did not need to be corroded. This cap is for PP3V3 underscore UPC XALDO. So what's that? PP3V3 UPC XALDO is a subrail of PP3V3 underscore G3 hot, most likely. Now, this comes out of the CD3215, as you'll see over here. See? 
That's our CD3215 chip, and it comes out of here. Now, when I measured PP3V3 underscore G3Hot to see if there was a short on it when it was only putting out 1.4 volts rather than 3.3 volts, I noticed that there was no short circuit. However, when I turned the machine on, the rail was being brought down. Why? Because the CD3215 is not going to give PP3V3 underscore G3Hot a pathway to PP3V3 underscore UPC underscore XA underscore LDO until the machine turns on. Only when the CD3215 turns on do you have PP3V3 underscore G3Hot to PP3V3 UPC XA LDO. And once that happens, then there's going to be a low resistance to ground. However, I can't measure resistance to ground when the machine in its of itself is off. Delete that. I can't measure resistance to ground when there's power going through. So there's no way I would ever be able to find that by measuring. I would not be able to see that that short is there on PP3V3 underscore G3Hot until there's power going through it. And once there's power going through it, I'm not going to be able to measure because the CD3215 needs to be powered on to give a pathway between PP3V3 underscore G3Hot and PP3V3 UPC XA LDO. So that is why this wasn't working because PP3V3 underscore G3Hot was below what it was supposed to be because the CD3215 was giving the power a pathway between PP3V3 underscore G3Hot and a shorted subrail of PP3V3 UPC XA LDO that is only going to be present when there is power going through the machine, which is a condition under which I cannot measure resistance to ground on any power line because you cannot measure resistance with a multimeter when there's power going through the board. Hopefully this has taught you something. Hopefully you've learned from my idiocy. And as always, I hope you learned something. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video. See you in the next one. Uh.